Hi again, it's Chrissy. This is part two of the Domestic Violence Condensed Brief. Um, I want to first start by saying uh, please reach out to us and grab a, a, a sheet, one sheeter here that is domestic abuse definitions. Um, this goes over sparse spouse and intimate partner violence. And the reason why this is really important is because Service members are actually held to a much higher standard than a standard civilian um, with regards to what we consider domestic violence and child abuse and all of the other definitions. The good news um, that I can tell you is that if you follow the Navy guidelines, you will uh, be okay state-wise, federal-wise, and across the board. Um, so know what those Navy definitions are and make sure you tailor the, yourself to those definitions and your command to those definitions. And so I would, I would suggest probably putting this up in a break room or a resource area or making sure people have access to it on a share drive. That way there's no questions as to what this can be. So I want to actually read, and again, I, I apologize for this, but these are... Um, legal definitions and I don't want to mess them up. So I'm going to read the definition of domestic abuse and domestic violence. So domestic violence or a pattern of behavior resulting in emotional, psychological abuse, economic control, and or interference with personal liberty that is directed toward a person who is either a current or former spouse, a person with whom the abuser shares a child in common, or a current or former intimate partner with whom the abuser shares or has shared a common domicile. So that's a wide definition. It covers a lot of bases. It's not just, oh, I got, I suffered a physical blow. It's also related to economic control, psychological abuse, emotional abuse, or anything that in interferes with my personal liberty. So the definition of domestic violence is an offense under the United States Code, the Uniform Code of, of Military Justice, or state law involving the use, attempted use, or threatened use of force or violence against a person, or violation of a lawful order issued for the protection of a person who is a current or former spouse, a person with whom the child shares a child in common, or a current or former intimate partner with whom the abuser shares or has shared a home. So that's a very wide definition. Um, I also will follow up a little bit more with this when we talk about prevention, kind of how some of those gray areas get defined. Um, but I also wanna make sure that we draw attention to economic control, what is emotional and psychological abuse, incident, um, what, it, what exactly is an incident, um, interference with personal liberty, what that looks like. So basically, you're kind of not allowing someone to go freely on their own will. You are um, isolating them from their family, their friends, or their social support. And then who is a victim and who is an alleged offender? Or in this case, I'm referring to them as the accused, um, not necessarily the offender until they have their right to due process. All right, so I would suggest picking one of those up. Another good one that I sometimes like to, I actually use this in effective parenting, um, whenever we talk about domestic violence and child abuse, I believe preventing spouse and intimate partner violence. This one has some general statements and then you answer them yes, no, or sometimes. But I like to talk about these because it generates a lot of really interesting conversation. Um, and then we kind of get a feel for people's beliefs, disbeliefs, biases that they might have. And if we don't know what the, they are, we can't really address them. So this is a good one too, you know, maybe to do as a small unit within your department or something um, to the effect. So like one of the examples is, I believe it's okay for one spouse to control the finances for the family. And if you grew up in a household that was very traditional, uh, dad went and made all the money, mom stayed home and took care of the house, he decided when she got a new dress, um, that might be normal. Um, whereas you might have a spouse later in life who came from a single parent household and didn't have a father um, that was checking in regularly on them. Um, so it generates some conversation. Um, and then I would refer you back if you have any other questions or there's a further clarification needed, just refer you back to the, the definitions. And then reach out to FAP if you have more, more questions on that. Um, within your command, you should have a family advocacy 
program point of contact and that person should work with your CEO to make sure the program is um, held to the to the standards that we expect. So reach out to our family advocacy personnel if you have other questions. Um, so the other thing that I want to cover, we covered the Navy definitions. The next thing I'd like to cover is the Navy's goal for FAP. Um, what we want in the Family Advocacy Program is to make sure that there is uh, victim support for people who have been the victims of child, of, not child abuse, domestic abuse. We also wanna make sure that there is prevention and awareness within the community, um, that the command has um, offender, or we wanna say accused accountability, and that there is an appropriate response. Um, we have rehabilitative intervention services at Fleet and Family Support Center. So I actually choose because this I work at Fleet and Family and this is the way I choose to look at things. Um, I choose to say that there are not bad people in the world. There are people who find themselves in bad situations and people who make bad choices. So just know if you find yourself in a with an open family advocacy case, that does not mean you will lose everything necessarily. It does not mean that uh, you will have a scarlet letter on your chest for the rest of your career. Um, there is a process and there are rehabilitation courses in place. And the other thing that I wanna say with Fleet and Family is we all have a, um, accountability. Um, we have reportables. So if you come and talk to us and we know that there's a family advocacy case that needs to be opened, we will do that because we are required by law to report domestic abuse, child abuse, and any other um, suspected abuse that we know of. Um, we have to report that. But with that said, confidentiality is very important to us. So I will say in our offices, I have seen people that I know socially um, that have been walking to parts of Fleet and Family that I know have tighter confidentiality than I do. And I then I do as a life skills educator and I have given them a head nod and I have said nothing about it to anybody else, okay? So confidentiality is of utmost important to us. With that said, we do have to report if, if we are told. The other people within your command, your triad has to report and your ombudsman. So if you have an ombudsman and she knows of any domestic violence, suspected child abuse, she has to report that to the authorities. All right, so that's something to know of as well. So I'm gonna cover in the next section a little bit more information about this, but these are the key players and key responsibilities that play a role in FAP. And we'll talk a little bit more about each of these. One of these is very different than all the rest of them and see if you can catch that one, okay? I'll see you back for section three.